Good morning, everyone. Welcome to PT on Ice. My name is Jessica Davis, and I am a part of the faculty for the spine management courses for the cervical and lumbar, and I'm lead faculty for the performing arts division. Uh, welcome. Today, um, I'm coming from my modal, mobile office, as you can see, uh, so I apologize. It's raining a little bit. Um, my son has a breakfast cafe, and he's going to be making me an omelet, so I didn't want to miss that. And I wanted to apologize, I had to come on early for that a little bit. And also, um, I have a little bit of a cold, so I'm not feeling 100%. So I apologize if I sound a little funny. So just bear with me. Um, so while I have you and while everybody's coming on, I just want to remind everybody of a couple things that are coming up that we're really excited about at ICE. Um, so modern, modern Management of the Older Adult is coming with Christina um, and Dustin. And this starts June 10th, the signups. And I have to tell you, the little bit that I've learned from them has dramatically changed my practice. And so I can only imagine what you would learn in a course with them. I find what they offer incredibly valuable. So I would encourage you all to check that out. And also, Virtual Ice is coming up again for the second year, year two. It's really exciting. There's going to be 52 sessions this year, so you get 24 CEUs. And remember, when you do this, you only there's only a window of opportunity to sign up from June excuse me, June 12th through June 26th. So you don't want to miss it. Um, and it's $29 a month. So it's a really good deal for 24, um, or I'm sorry, yeah, 24 CEUs. And total spine thrust, we're going to have uh, Justin Dunaway here in uh, Pennsylvania, which I'm really excited about, um, and Scottsdale, PA. I'm going to come too. Um, there's a bunch of faculty that are going to be coming. Um, the nobodies will be there, so it's going to be a big deal. Um, so sign up for that. Um, that's going to be June 23rd and 24th. Okay, so my topic of the day is cervical myelopathy. And I picked this topic because... Basically, if we're not seeing it, it's probably seeing us. It's actually pretty common. Um, and most of the time, it's something that we need to just be aware of um, and monitor in our patients. But there are times where if we don't pick up things, it could be potentially harmful. So I wanted to go over a patient case of mine sort of as an introduction of what happened and also admit that this is a case where um, this was earlier in my career, and I made a few mistakes, in my opinion. Um, as we always reflect back, there's always learning that can be um, accomplished in our lifetime. And this is a case where, you know, I think back and I think, wow, I really could have made it a bit of a difference, I think, in my own critical assessment of myself. So this was a 60-year-old male who presented to me, um, he was referred by his physician for bilateral, now I'm emphasizing bilateral, leg pain. So his symptoms were described as a burning sensation in his calves, very isolated to his calves, and he would draw a very specific area. And good morning, everybody. Uh, so he would tell me that these symptoms would come on when he would be standing and walking. So it was affecting his walking tolerance. Now he was a volunteer fireman, um, very involved in his work, very passionate about it. And this was affecting his lifestyle because he needed to be on his feet and he needed to be active and rely on his legs. And he was progressively not being able to rely on his legs. So in my mind at the time, um, some of my differential diagnosis for this patient was, of course, lumbar stenosis because of the standing and walking limitations. It could have been some vascular claudication, right? Um, and I was thinking it could be also some adverse neural tension. Um, he was also a long-term statin user, so he was on statins for a progressively long time, so that could have been something. Um, but admittedly, in my mind, cervical myelopathy didn't cross my mind at that time. Now, one of the things that I've learned um, through my fellowship, basically, and we talk about it in ICE, is the, and we emphasize this, of course, is the use of the body chart, right? So when you're doing your body chart, you're clearing all of your body areas, and his symptoms are very isolated but bilateral. And one of the things that we learn is if a patient presents to you with bilateral complaint, never forget to do your neuro assessment. Now, even though he described it as a tightness, he also reported it as a burning. So we know that burning could be described, it's, it's correlated with something neurological potentially, right? Um, so where I made a mistake in this patient is I strictly looked at his lumbar spine, I assessed his leg strength, 
Um, I do recall doing reflexes and checking for adverse neural tension and he was positive for that. So I treated him for that. Um, and I ended up ruling out vascular claudication. He didn't have um, any change in pulses and we also did the treadmill test. So he classically at least presented to me as a stenotic patient. And we had waxing and waning of his symptoms. So he improved a little bit. He didn't maintain that improvement. Um, and he admittedly was frustrated as was I as a clinician. So I had a conversation with a doctor and I said, you know, I'm gonna have him come back to you for further testing. I just don't think I'm getting the results that I like. Um, and so he went back and he was referred to a neurosurgeon um, who did imaging. And he came back to me a month later after having a fusion of his lumbar spine. Now, this is where, you know, what, this is why I think about this case often. So when he came into my clinic, he walked, and this is why gait assessment is so critical, and it's so important that we assess our patients even as they walk into the clinic because we're going to catch things because when we tell them we're watching their gait, they might change it. He walked in with a wide-based, ataxic gait that I will never forget. And the fortunate thing was I had worked with him previously, so I knew this wasn't his normal pattern. And even if I hadn't worked, I would know that this was like an abnormal presentation. So he had an ataxic gait, and I thought, this is unusual. This is something I would not expect after a lumbar fusion. Um, so of course, all of my little lights went off that I need to really take a look at this patient head to toe. So unfortunately, when I assessed him, he had a positive Hoffman's, hyperreflexia, upper and lower. He had um, positive uh, Clonus and positive Babinski. So if you look at the Cook article in 2010, um, Cook highlighted five things that can be useful in our differential diagnosis with identifying cervical myelopathy. And the criteria are number one on the list is gait deviation, uh, Hoffman, positive Hoffman's, positive inver inverter supinated sign. So for those of you just to review, that's when you do the reflex and you get, instead of getting what we would expect, we get this presentation like this with our fingers. Um, positive Babinski and age over 45. So this patient met all of those criteria. So I was concerned and if you also look, Cook also published that Babinski in a different study, the Babinski, excuse me, the Babinski study um, was the highest with the highest correlation or highest likelihood ratio. So if a patient has a positive B Babinski, you really, really need to be concerned about this patient. Now, if your patient presents this way, we know with cervical myelopathy, we have to just watch and monitor, but it does warrant a call to the physician and a discussion. And in his case, it was such a progressive, rapid decline. It was very concerning. So he did go back to the neurosurgeon. And unfortunately, he ended up having a cervical fusion. So I think back and I reflect on this case and I feel, you know, in my mind, could I have picked up on this earlier if I had followed my, what I know now, which is to do a full neuro. And I don't know if I would have picked up on it, you know, because again, it was pretty progressive. Um, but the patient did improve significantly after he had that. Unfortunately, he had to have that, which was, I felt terrible. Um, so what the reason I wanted to present this case is it's something that we have to think about. You know, if they have bilateral symptoms, we need to consider that as, as our diagnosis. We need to look at a full neuro screen with our patient. And I was looking at some of the literature and World Neurosurgery in 2017, actually, just published an article where they did a systematic review on assessing the role of gait in determining the presentation of uh, cervical myelopathy. And also, they said that gait is a valuable tool in identifying if these patients are showing progress postoperatively. So some of the things that they said that they found in their review was decreased gait speed, uh, decreased cadence, decreased step length, decreased stride length, and decreased single leg stance time. So when you're evaluating your patients, it's imperative that you're looking at all of these different variables um, in your clinical presentation. So again, to review, we always wanna do that body chart, we always wanna have our competing hypotheses, and we need to prove or disprove ourselves, correct? And we need to make sure we're being our patient's advocate and thorough. And if there's something that we don't like, we need to refer. And in a case like my patient, if there's something that I, that seems abnormal, 
Um, when originally he came to me and he wasn't showing the progress I expected, I made a referral. So don't forget those things. And I know I emphasize that a lot, um, but I find it so powerful and we can really save our patients and make a difference. So I hope this helped you. And I know this was a little bit brief, but I have to go to my breakfast cafe now and see my son make me an omelet. Um, but I wish you all a have wonderful day and thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, never hesitate to reach out to me and uh, don't forget to check and thoroughly clear your patients. Okay. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye.